doesn't this YouTube lark look easy? You just sit in front of a camera, chat a bit, and all jobs done, really, isn't it? No. Because I've had one hell of a day with sound issues. So apologies if the sound quality on this video isn't quite up to our usual standards, because I'm having to record the sound on the phone. Hello, I'm Peter Vaughan, and today I've got Adria's brand new flagship, the Mercedes-based Supersonic, which was launched last summer to the press in glorious heat on the Slovenian coast. What a wonderful, idyllic Mediterranean backdrop that must have been, but I missed that one. So here I am in Salisbury in January, and it's, I don't know, minus four or something, but never mind, this is a lovely motorhome to be testing. And of course, it sits now above Adria's previous flagship, the Sonic, which was based on a Fiat. And now we've got Supersonic. Four models, two like this at 7.83 metres on a single rear axle, and two closer to nine metres with tag axles. Each length is available with an island bed, or as here, this SL model has twin singles. Here you have a four and a half ton Mercedes Alco chassis. Price, £156,690. Now, if this was a German motorhome, there'd be then a luxury pack, a silver pack, a wheels pack, a doors pack, a windows pack, a blue sky pack, park on grass pack. Uh, yeah, you've got my idea. But no, how many options do you think, how many options do you think there are on this vehicle? One, the coffee machine. Wow, that'll give the Germans something to think about. So, this rather fine looking machine is what you get for your 156 grand. Yes, it comes in silver as standard. Yes, the alloy wheels are standard. Yes, even the Truma Aventa habitation air conditioning unit on the roof is standard. And there's a 140 watt solar panel up there as well. Of course, you've got flush fit side windows and like most Continental A-classes, you've got a cab door on the near side and your main habitation door on the off side. Both, of course, linked to your Mercedes central locking fob. So let's take a look down the near side to start with. Well, first thing you'll spot is that there's no ugly diesel filler because Adria have hidden it in a little door all of its own. Then you've got your fresh water filler, water tank. The fresh water tank is in the double floor. It's 150 litres. And you've got a little 12 volt socket if you want to fill that with a pump from an external container. Gas locker holds two 11 kilo cylinders. Even got mud flaps for the alloy wheels. And then of course at the back, you've got the garage. Hello again. Now, they've said they'll stop locking me in the garage if I can get my subscriber numbers up to 75,000. So please do remember to subscribe to the channel. We're at 68,500-ish, I think, at the moment, so not too far to go. Right, back to this garage. And it looks a good one, doesn't it? You've got full-size doors at either end. You've got 12 volt and 230 volt sockets back here. You've got an external shower point, nice practical flooring, some little drain holes at either end if you have to put soggy mountain bikes or whatever in here. And, well, what's the space for mountain bikes? It looks like just over 1.2 metres high. At floor level, we've got 83 centimetres and total width 1.2 one three meters so a really good size garage which can take up to 400 kilos 
use for shelves as well for those smaller bits and bobs that you don't want rolling around underneath your bikes and this I rather like too there's a drawer here and you'll see that again later on because that's actually underneath the steps that lead up to the rear single bed so useful to have a little bit of space that you can get to either from the living area or from the garage lighting of course on either side and your adjustable tie downs and even the Audi heating in here as well it's nice to see too that Adria has even made an effort with the back end styling there's a gentle forward incline to this back panel so like the coral and matrix it's not just a completely square box this lighting strip across the back reminds me somewhat of my 205 GTI that I thought I was so cool in driving around in the late 80s of course reminds you that you've got the Merc all silver reversing camera built in and nice little detail although you've got this lovely molded back panel the bottom part is separate so if you have a little bump you haven't got to replace the whole thing and just replace this lower bumper section looking down the offside of course you've got the too late omni store awning which yes is standard you've got nice wide habitation door of course your cassette toilet servicing hatch your mains hook up and then this rather odd little door here with an external TV point and a main socket in there so just one thing one more aspect to look at before we go inside up front it does look very smart doesn't it very automotive and I think Adria has done a great job on the styling bus type mirrors on either side of course with twin lenses each LED headlights and LED fog lights with cornering function as well all looks great but then the access under the bonnet well I've seen bigger letter boxes at least you have got access to your windscreen washer reservoir and the ad blue which are the things you'll probably need most often but everything else is somewhat buried and then just before I go inside in the lovely warm Audi heated interior couple of things I should have told you perhaps the wastewater tank well that's underneath but it is heated and insulated heated from the Audi system and again that's 150 litres payload for the vehicle is 721 kilos so decent payload on the four and a half ton chassis of course and before I go inside just look at this backdrop that's old serum up there an Iron Age hill fort that was later occupied by the Romans well I wish I had time to explore that and also of course Salisbury which is just a short bus ride away from this camping and caravanning club site that's open all year thankfully because well our choices for filming locations at this time of year are somewhat limited back to this motorhome which I have to say I'm beginning to really like yes the leather is standard and it's real leather and there's a choice of different colors maybe some of them a bit more practical than this rather pale cream but this does look plush doesn't it armrests are very easy to adjust just squeeze underneath and up and down they go none of those twiddly catches that you used to get on these armchairs of course the A-class feeling of space with the big panoramic windscreen and these deep side windows well that gives you a lovely feeling of extra space in the front of the motorhome here what else well the lighting's good isn't it you've got these little spotlights reading lights that slide along these rails you've got hidden speakers underneath the bed and the whole way that the base of the bed is designed I really like it doesn't feel so much like a bed above you it feels much more sort of integrated I think it's the fact that you've got stitching around here and it just looks like part of the lounge what else can I tell you well it's a great 
place to sit. You've got room for your 30, up to a 32 inch TV on the wall over there, but the TV itself is one of the very few things that you don't get as standard. TV bracket, aerial socket, power point, but no actual telly. You could just sit here and enjoy the view because it is a lovely light and airy place. You've got these big side windows with the nice um, upholstered panels around them. You've got the big roof light above and it's the proper wind up one, not the cheap push up one. There's some lovely design details. You've got these coat hooks by the door and a really good grab handle as you come in. Nice bin on the door to which you can lift off and take to the bin to empty. Adria says that they've uh, looked not just at motorhome design when they came up with the supersonic, but actually modern domestic interiors and even yacht design. And I think that does actually show in here. It's a very stylish place to be. I like these curved concave top lockers that sort of emphasize the space. I also like this sofa. It's a much more comfortable place to sit than you might expect of an L-shaped lounge. It's not, you know, the modern parallel sofas that you see in Lost of Eight Angle, although that is part of the layout in the island bed version at this length. You can have that parallel sofa lounge in that model only. I actually prefer this L-shaped sofa because it's got this lovely backrest, nice and nice and raked, you've got plenty of room to put your feet up here and best of all the headrests come off so you've got this nice through view into the kitchen, much more sociable. So it's a really good lounge for two or three people, might be a bit of a squeeze for more but you could get four in for the odd evening and well when there's only two of you this is my best this is my favourite feature. Looks like just a little side seat, doesn't it? The sort of thing that, well, is a, perhaps an occasional perch in a lot of motorhomes with a layout like this. But this one, well, you just lift it off its clips on the side wall, place it wherever you want and put your feet up. Now you're in the perfect position to watch the telly or just watch the world go by. There's no shortage of USBs in this van either. Two over there on that little shelf by the door, two more down here and a main socket there as well. Then the table. Well, I think this is just about the right size for two people. Doesn't get in the way. You can slide it and move it in every direction. And then if you do invite your friends in for dinner, just slide it out, press the middle bit down, and then you have a full size dining table. Plenty of room now for four people to get around for a banquet. Then, as I say, this sofa is a lovely place. It's, um, for once, it's a hard choice to, to decide whether you'd sit in one of the captain's chairs or relax back into the corner here, although I think probably the swivel driver's seat with the footstool would be my top choice. For travelling, you simply flip over this top flap, pull a strap and up pops this sturdy steel frame to support your headrests. And then they just slot in on top. So nice high back so adults are well protected for travel and kids are well protected too because this seat comes with Isofix. Moving on to the kitchen and doesn't it look smart? I like the way it's angled so you've got this greater floor space towards the front of the vehicle. All helps with the feeling of space. Korean style worktops too, so that it has that look of a high-end domestic kitchen. Lift off cover for the sink, 
creates more work top of course when you're not using the sink and domestic size drain there too and then of course one of these posh lift off hose style taps three burners in line on the hob to free up worktop in front great idea that and of course the nespresso machine that is the only optional extra fitted on this van down below you've got six really good sized drawers plenty of room for all your pots and pans plates non-perishable foods and so on but none of those drawers is specifically designed for cutlery plenty of room in these top lockers with their hidden catches and real really nice quality hinges these drawers appear to have central locking there's a button here but unfortunately that seems to have been a casualty of this vehicle having been at the october nec show and then over here you've got the 177 litre fridge freezer and it's one of these newfangled ones with the doors that open from either side the only disappointment is the oven not only is it quite small you'll do pizzas in there but not a roast dinner i'm afraid and although it is an oven and grill well it is a bit high isn't it probably ideal for somebody like me to do their toast in the morning but as i say you're not gonna cook anything terribly elaborate in there over here you've got more shelved storage ideal for packet foods and so on and then underneath is a small wardrobe in there i've got the draining board well that just sits loose on the counter if the hobs shut down then that's uh, then that can sit on top of the hob as long as it's not hot obviously but you can just place that wherever you need it you've even got a little holder for your uh, coffee capsules for the Nespresso machine and lovely lighting around the splashback on the kitchen which contrasts nicely with the window surround in the lounge area so you really do have defined zones and you've got a glass splashback so you don't spill things when you're washing up you don't splash your uh, lovely cream leather upholstery also in the kitchen nearly forgot there's an extractor hood and then coat hooks over on the other side always a useful feature i love this carpet too when you come into a motorhome often you find the carpets are a bit thin a bit cheap even in expensive motorhomes not here they feel nice and plush underfoot of course up above you've got your truma aventa air conditioning unit and in the floor not only have you got your uh, fresh water tank that we showed earlier but also your twin leisure batteries there isn't actually storage in this double floor as you get in a lot of big a classes but you have got those services built in to that double floor area and i should say too that there's a flat floor right through from the bedroom to the cab there's not even a step in the cab so that's another plus sandwich between the kitchen and your bedroom of course is your ensuite and you've got the usual facility to close it off from the rest of the van this big toilet door comes right around and closes things off and then you have a sliding door to keep your bedroom private over on the near side, you've got a super shower, really modern, nice shelf for your shampoo and so on, a water saving shower head on a riser bar, a hanging rail for any wet clothes, a roof vent above. It does look very, very smart and a really nice shower to use, I would think. The only thing is that because there's a step in the shower tray, the floor area isn't huge if you've got big feet that is something to consider so over on the other side on the off side of the van 
you've got your toilet area. Does the very German thing of having the toilet roll holder inside the cupboard and you post it through this little slit. Plenty of cupboard space because you've got this tall locker behind me. Um, nice fiddle rails in there to keep everything in situ when you arrive at your campsite and open the door so everything doesn't tumble out. I rather like this stylish backlit mirror with this silver finish behind. And again, you've got this Kerok worktop, same as in the kitchen. It's like a sort of Corian style finish with the upstand built into it. Very, very smart. Toothbrush mug, soap dispenser, the usual Dometic toilet that I'm sitting on. That's no surprise, but everything else, well, it does feel nicely finished, doesn't it? Bit more storage up there. You've also got towel hooks and robe hooks. You've got another roof vent. You've got little spotlights. You've even got enough room on the loo with this door closed. And for once, the toilet is at a comfortable sitting height. You don't have to have legs like a giraffe. It's no surprise in a big continental van to find twin single beds at the back. But these are good ones. Easy access, up a couple of steps, carpeted steps too. And then when you're up here, you've got another big wind up hecky sunroof. Big windows at either side. Pleated, pleated blinds on those. Nice backlighting around the window surrounds. A TV point, if you want it, at the foot of the offside bed on a little cupboard at the foot of the near side bed. USBs in there too, and two more USBs behind me, and another one in this little movable block. Rear speakers, more of these little spotlights for reading, more top lockers with this nice concave finish, and this headboard all looks very, very smart, doesn't it? Beds are a good size too, 1.97 metres long, by 0.81 or 81 centimetres wide. That's six foot five and a half by two foot eight. And of course, at shoulder level, you've got this infill cushion in the middle. So you've got the full width of the van at shoulder level. You can extend this, pull it out, add an infill cushion, Access then is slightly more awkward unless you've got long legs, but it does give you an even bigger bed. No ladder needed as in some vans. Now under that middle step is the drawer that we saw in the garage. And you've got more drawer space under the offside bed. Good for folded clothes. And over on the near side, you've got another wardrobe much bigger than the wardrobe that we saw earlier. And you can also get to that one from above. But I guess what you're thinking, that Vaughan bloke is gonna say, oh no, I'm gonna bang my head again in bed. Well, not this time, because in this van, you have these nice ratcheted supports and now you can sit up very comfortably in bed, oh, relax with the morning paper or watch the telly. But of course this is a four berth motorhome with the usual A-class drop down bed in the cab. First of all, well we've pulled the side blinds but the Windscreen blind is electric. Just press that button on the dashboard and wait very, very patiently. At least you don't have to keep your finger on the button. And then if you want a bit of daylight in the morning, you can also open it from the top which is quite a handy little feature. 
just give you a little bit of daylight in the front of the van without spoiling your privacy. But what we really want to show you is the bed. So I'll put that back up. Should have said too, when we were driving, I didn't need them, but you have got these pull down sun visors. So those are quite good as well. Now, the front bed, you just do the usual A-class thing of in the cab seats flat or the backrests flat and then it's another button up here by the door it's not exactly rapid and this time you do have to keep your finger on the button but once it's down you have a bed that's 1.87 meters by 1.44 meters which is six foot one and a half long by four foot eight i think a good ladder although i actually found i didn't need it i could just jump up using the footstool nice wide treads on the ladder so they don't hurt your feet but the thing i like best of all up here is this huge sunroof now if you were staying in this van in the mediterranean and it's really it can be really really hot at night or even if we have a summer like we did in 2022 well that is going to be a massive boon because some A classes have a drop down bed and no ventilation here at all. Well, you've got that, you've got the big hecky just behind as well, and of course, you've got your habitation air conditioning. This seems a very comfortable bed, too. It's on these plastic springs, you've got a privacy curtain. So, be nice. Right, so driving this new flagship Mercedes Adria. Well, I think you can tell probably the first thing I'm going to say because, well, this isn't a great road surface and, yeah, we've got quite a few raffles from the living area. Now, on smoother roads, on smoother roads it's great. There's, there's very little conversion noise where we traveling down a German autobahn, I'm sure it'd be lovely and quiet because engine noise is actually well suppressed, better than some A-classes I could mention. Um, they've done a good job of the cab too, it's the way it's all integrated, the Mercedes with the Adria bits, that's all nicely done. The way the dashboard slopes away gives you better visibility when you're driving and of course you've got those big coach style mirrors with the twin lenses so you've got good for you aft you've got your reversing camera through the usual Mercedes 10 and a quarter inch MBUX display so that gives you good vision also on there you've got the crystal clear sat nav display so all the usual advantages of the Merc uh, this one of course comes with the 170 horsepower engine as standard and the 9 speed automatic gearbox both very good plenty of performance um, it's smooth as anything can't fault it from that point of view the Alco chassis gives you a firm ride uh, but uh, also gives you very stable handling it drives very well with this van other A-class issues, well, of course, when you come down to a roundabout or something, you need to be aware of the fact that you can get a blind spot from those mirrors. Um, so just move your head around, just make sure you're not missing anything. And the other thing, of course, with an A-class is we have to look at windscreen wipers. And these have the washer jets on the wiper arms, do a lovely job of cleaning the screen. Very little unswept area over on the driver's side, a bit more on the passenger side, but not drastically so. And of course, they're set up for right hand drive as they should be, but you won't always find that on right hand drive A class motorhomes. So, yeah, the wipers do a better job. 
some A classes. You also get a very good spec for this vehicle. These Agouti seats are absolutely superb, really high back and comfortable, lots of adjustment, and they're even heated. So once again, with this Adria, you get all the toys as standard. So, the Adria Supersonic 780 SL, my final verdict. Yeah, I really like it. I love the interior design. I think it feels really crisp and modern, and it feels very classy. What don't I like? Well, the rattles on the road, of course. I'd like it to have a spare wheel, but then you could easily add one of those and just pop it in the garage. There's room and payload for it what else would i like well i'd like a bigger oven and i'd like it to be in the main kitchen unit under the worktop rather than up above the fridge freezer but then both the oven and the rattles well you could find the same issues in quite a lot of continental motorhomes of this ilk what you won't find in most rivals is this sort of spec as standard. You can tick a lot of options on some German vans to get anywhere near the spec you've got here. And that, I think, is probably, along with the interior look, if you like the interior look, those are the features that will sell it to you. But if you're thinking that you might like a supersonic, just come and try this lounge. It really is very, very good. And I hope that my sound issues in recording this video haven't spoilt your enjoyment of it as much as they've spoilt my day. Please enjoy our videos. Please keep subscribing, keep watching, and hopefully next time things will run a little smoother.